welcome to Saudi. Thank you. So you were saying it's not your first time here? No, I've been here two times and I've also been working with the Saudi Chamber of Commerce together with the UK Chamber of Commerce at the, another amazing event in London. Now, you've just come off stage already, you've had your keynote today. Can you yeah. just give the listeners a kind of a quick flavor about your, your message you were trying to get across today? Yeah, so today we were talking about artificial intelligence. Uh, my, my high level topic is always innovation, but AI is part of innovation these days, of course. And I've been working within the field of AI since 2006. So I've seen quite many interesting things coming and going already. But it's first now that consumers start to see tools that they can use in their everyday lives. And what we talked about on the stage was obviously many different areas, but we were focusing on how companies can start to adapt, but also make best use of different AI technologies within their space. And how to do this in a safe way. Yeah. Because many companies are slightly worried, and with that, they're not even starting. Where do you stand then on the, the kind of ethical responsibilities the companies have uh, on, on the scale? Are you even concerned or what? It is a challenging space for sure. And the, the greatest challenge that we see is that we don't have a global law that everybody needs to follow. And it's such an amazingly impactful environment that no one is regulating, that no one is controlling, because even the researchers are not really in full control of these different AI technologies. Now, I want to ask, because we're in Saudi here at the seamless KSA event, and maybe it's a, a, a little bit too early to say, but do you see a difference uh, kind of from region to region in, in the, the approach and mindset when it comes to AI tools? Um, obviously, you're, you're coming over from Europe or, yeah. or yeah. Or in a way, does AI remove that kind of geographical boundaries? What I see is that countries have different maturity level. And Saudi is just like all other countries trying to get an idea of how to make best use of this. But the big difference in Saudi is that they are pushing forward without running with a handbrake on. There's many of the companies that are here today are probably thinking, how can I take those first steps and how can I start to develop a, a, an AI strategy what would you say to them yeah so at first it's just as you say the first steps many companies are looking at this as this big giant that they need to tame in one way or another but that's gonna take too much time and then smaller companies are going to outsmart the big companies as they are able to actually tame that big giant in small pieces so for any company to start working with AI, you need to start and not think that you're building this huge colossal solution, rather look at like, where is the smallest area that we can actually start to work with AI in different ways. And uh, this leads on to the question I was going to ask, if many companies are going to start at this stage, are they actually providing value, do you think, to the, the end consumer? That depends on where you start, of course, but if you don't start, you will never finish. So you have to start somewhere, even if you feel that maybe this is not actually driving the value that we intended, but to pressure test the environment, to see how you as a company choose to form your own idea about AI in, and how you decide that this is where we want to uh, load our personal information, our, our internal data, and this is where we just want to use an existing language model, and this is where we want to use other AI tools to generate a user interface or ads or video experiences, or to use AI to make customer research by phone and having a conversation with consumers, but to have it totally handed over to an AI. Yeah. Carl, I want to touch on some of the other areas of innovation then. For many of the businesses here, they might be looking to see where is the next place that they can innovate in in the next five to 10 years. Yep. What are some of the key trends, key metrics that they can kind of look out for that will help them to, to pinpoint areas that they can start to think about innovation in? 
the trends are that we will see much more of generative AIs. So don't think of it as uh, just polishing the surface of your company, but actually disrupting how your company is operating. Where could you use different generative AI modules or methods to actually drive what it is, what it is that you're looking to achieve? One of the areas I'm very interested in, and I'm not sure if this is something that you touch on, but it's creating that innovative culture yep. within the workplace to, to, to foster that innovation. How would you say is the best way for businesses to kind of go about creating this culture that helps people innovate? To show trust. Internally, to show that you trust the, the people working within the company, but also to show that for me to be able to trust you to play around with these innovative technologies, I suggest that you use these sets of data or you don't share this type of information. And maybe that starts with an internal education about AI and, and how you as a company want to protect but also enable the company. So many companies and we have seen some examples of this, have said that the employees are free to use different AI tools yeah. without understanding the impact. And that have, in a way, backfired for some of these companies that all of a sudden see that some of their internal secrets have been accessible in the large language models that have been trained as a result of their employees doing conversation about secrets. Do you think this is, in a way, the price you have to pay almost by accepting that mistakes will happen? If you're looking at being innovative, mistakes will happen. But it's a learning curve. So plan for this in the best possible way and make sure that people understand more before they get started. And don't try to regulate it because you can't really regulate innovation internally. Instead, try to support it by giving them a better understanding. Carl, you're going to be speaking at Seamless Europe uh, in Berlin yes. in October. Can you outline some of the, the differences you see in the e-commerce e retail landscape between here in the Middle East and what you're experiencing back in Europe? Yeah, so the big difference is that Saudi is a new market for, for all this technology and innovation. It's a market that is that have an, a tremendous appetite to make a difference and make a global change. While the European market have been around and operating in a, in a way more or less like one of these really old big companies that are slowly changing, slowly adapting. And as Saudi don't have any of that legacy, they don't need to slowly adapt. They can just quickly implement. So I guess the key message is expect big change here yes. and quick. Yes, in the next exactly. However yeah. many and we see yeah. it already. Yeah. I mean, the, the move that Saudi is doing is amazing. People in Europe have not started to understand what's actually going on here. But as I've been here now a couple of times, I see it's, it's not just amazing mega projects on papers it's things that are going on it's not about to happen it's happening and we've got 40,000 visitors expected to arrive here today and tomorrow yeah that shows a real appetite to to keep up with the pace yes. of change that's happening in the region right now yeah what are some of the big challenges that you think they will face in keeping up with us any company, any organization, any country that are growing too fast will have some challenges. But if you plan for that in the process and you accept that there will be things that are not going exactly as, as we intended, I keep on saying failing forward. Whenever you get into this situation where other people might say that you failed, I would say that you have learned. If you did not dare to do those moves, you would have gone nowhere. Thank you so much. All right.